Okay, we're going to take a look at question four off of the shipping engines assignment one handout. It says, you are making fruit baskets with oranges, bananas, and apples. The table gives the amount of fruit required for the two arrangements. Each day, you have 240 oranges, 270 bananas, and 320 apples. Arrangement A earns a profit of $10 per basket, and arrangement B earns a profit of $8 per basket. How many of each fruit basket should you make per day to maximize your profit? So first off, I just want to take a look at the table that's already partially filled out for us. We can say that we have the uh, different types of fruits here. Uh, how many are required for an arrangement A and how many are required for arrangement B. So arrangement A takes four oranges, six bananas, and eight apples. Arrangement B is six of each kind of fruit. And we have a blank column here for total. So what I'm going to put here is the total amount of oranges, bananas, and apples that I have available to me. So I'm going to say for oranges, I have a total of 240. So the amount that I'm going to use needs to be smaller than or equal to 240. I have 270 bananas, so I'm going to say I'm going to use a total of 270 or less, so smaller than or uh, less than or greater than 270 for the amount I'm going to use in the bananas. And then I'm going to say less than or equal to 320 for apples. Now, part A down here, it says to define the variables. The best way to, to, to approach this is to think about what is this question asking me to do? How many of each fruit basket should you make per day? So the variables are the, you know, what the, what, what are the amounts are that we're asking for? The, um, the number of each fruit basket we should make per day. Uh, I'm going to use X and Y just because they fit into Desmos a little bit better. So X is going to be the number of um, arrangement A, and Y is going to be the number of arrangement B that I make each day. So I'll make X arrangement A's and Y arrangement B's. B says to write the objective formula or the objective function. Remember, the objective function is um, it's going to tell you what the profit, in this case, I, I think about well, what is my objective? My objective is to maximize my profit. So the function, the objective function, is going to tell me how, how much profit did I make under um, certain scenarios. So if I made a certain number of arrangement A and a certain number of arrangement B, how much profit would I make doing that combination of, of baskets? So my profit formula, or my objective formula, it says I make $10 per basket of B and, oh no, sorry, A makes $10 per basket and B makes $8 per basket. So if I want to find out how much profit I make, I'm going to take 10 times the number of baskets I make for arrangement A, plus 8 times the number of baskets I make for arrangement B. So 10 times X plus 8 times Y will tell me how much profit I'm going to make. C says to write the inequalities um, for the constraints. So remember, constraints are like the restrictions that I have in, in this scenario. Like, how am I restricted? Of course, if I had no restrictions, I would just make like a million a and a million B. I'd make a million basket A's and a million basket B's, but that's not actually possible because I have certain restrictions on the materials that are going to go into these baskets. So the constraints talk to me, they, they tell me about uh, what those restrictions are. So if I think about only having 240 oranges to work with and it takes four oranges for each basket uh, A and six oranges for each basket B, then that tells me that if I take four times the number of A's that I'm going to make plus six times the number of basket B's I'm going to make, that amount has to be less than or equal to 240 because that's the number of oranges I'm going to use for basket A. That's the number of oranges I'm going to use for basket B. So if I combine that together, I have to stay under that 240 amount that I have available to me. And then I can do the same thing for bananas and apples using these other limits for that uh, for those uh, different fruits. So six times the number of A's plus six times the number of B's has to stay under the 270 that I have uh, in terms of bananas available to me. And then 8X plus 6Y has to stay under 320. And then there's always usually a couple other restrictions that say I can't make negative amounts of these variables, right? So the number of baskets I make for arrangement A has to be bigger than or equal to zero. And the number of baskets I make for B has to be bigger than or equal to zero. Just saying I can't make negative baskets A's and or negative baskets for B. 
they're either going to be zero or higher. So these are my five constraints. Now, D says graph the constraints in Desmos, copy and paste. Well, I'm just going to sketch the graph over here. So I'm going to switch real quick to Desmos and type in these different constraints. So I'm going to switch to my Desmos window, and I'm going to say, um, well, first of all, I had the X is bigger than or equal to zero restraint, and I had the Y is bigger than or equal to zero. You can see that those just shaded in the positive sides for X and the positive side for Y. So to the right of the Y axis and above the X axis are now shaded in. Then I have the other restraints that talks about the um, numbers of the different fruits I have available. So I'm going to have to flip back and forth here a little bit. 4x plus 6y less than or equal to 240. 4x plus 6y less than or equal to 240. Um, and then I have one. Of course, now I probably need to change my window here because there we go. I was zoomed in too far to see where that line actually showed up. Then I have 6x plus 6y is less than or equal to 270. Less than or equal to 270. So there I see another constraint pop up on my graph. And then the last one I need to graph is the 8x plus 6y is less than or equal to 320. 8x plus 6y is less than or equal to 320. Uh, I don't like using that black color, so I usually change it to maybe this yellow or this orangish color. Okay, so now I'm going to look at this graph and I'm going to figure out where is the place where everything, uh, every different constraint shaded. And it's sometimes a little bit easier to see than others. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit, pan around. It would be this region right in here because I need to look for the places that are to the left or below all three of these colors, right? And I know I'm in the first quadrant because that's what these two, first two take care of. They say I'm only going to be looking in the first quadrant here. And every these other restraints or constraints, I'm looking at regions to the left or below the lines that go with those. So the place where all of those are shaded is this region right here. And now I want to look for the corners of that region. So there's one corner at 0, 40. There's a corner here at 1530. There's a corner here at 2520. And then there's a corner here at 40, 0. And of course, we have the 0, 0 corner down here as well. So those are the five corners of my feasible region. So I'm going to sketch that out real quick. Um, so let me go back to that window. And let's sketch those out. So I'm just going to quickly sketch out an X and Y axis. And I had a corner at 0, 0. And then let's see, I'll have to flip back and forth. 0, 40 up here. 0, 40. Uh, 40 comma 0 over here, and then two more, 25, 20, and 15, 30. So maybe about here I'll graph 25 comma 20, and up here maybe I'll graph, I think it was 15 comma 30. And then I'll connect all of those to show what my feasible region would be. So this area now in here, is my feasible region for different combinations of basket A and basket B that I could make. But I know that the best option is going to be at one of the corners. I'm trying to maximize my profit, so I'm probably not going to make zero of each because that would make zero profit. So the next thing I'm going to do, part E, is I'm going to identify these corners and substitute them into my objective function, my profit function, to figure out what would the profit be for each of these possibilities. So I'll, I'll use this space up here for E, like my sketch for D. I'm going to take 0, 40, put that into my profit. So that would be 10 times 0 plus 8 times 40. So that would make me 320 in profit for making 0 and 40 baskets. We'll do 15, 30. So my profit would be... Um, profit there would be 10 times 15 plus 8 times 30. So that'd be 150 plus 240. So that sounds like $390 in profit, a little bit better than the other option. I have one at 2520. So that would be 10. I keep wanting to put that parentheses there. 10 times 25 plus 8 times 20. So that'd be 
Let's see, that's 250 plus 160. That looks like $410, so even better. And then lastly, I got to check if I do 40 and 0. So my profit would be 10 times 40 plus 8 times 0, which is just going to be 400. So my best option is right here, making 25 basket A's and 20 basket B's. So let's answer the question F. Um, this, uh, let's see if I can kind of move that over a little bit. We should make, I guess it says you are making, I should make 25 uh, of A and 20 of B. This gets me $410 in profit. And that's, uh, that's the answer to my question. That's finally it. my answer F. What is the maximum profit? 410 by making 25 arrangement A and 20 of arrangement B.